So when you first log into Thinkorswim, uh, this is going to be the home screen. Um, I've been a Thinkorswim user for almost eight years now, and I never used the home screen, so I'm not going to spend much time on it. Um, once you move away from the home screen, the only way to get back to it is to click on the home screen right here. Um, I primarily tr stay in the monitor, the trade, the analyze, and the charts tabs, and that's primarily what we're going to go over today. Um, before you get started, the first thing you need to make sure that you do, and this is on the paper trading or simulated trading app, is you want to make sure you have real-time data enabled. If you do not have that enabled, you can go over to support over here and just send them a live support request. It'll take you less than five minutes to do. You may have to turn the app back off and on to get this to set up, but once you do that, that'll enable the live trading and it's gonna show you the quotes in real time. Um, otherwise, if you do not do this, you will be 20 minutes behind. So go ahead and do that now if you're in the paper trading app. So I'm going to be going over this information kind of quickly. Um, if you do have a question about something, feel free to ask in the comments. Another thing you can do is you can go over to the education tab over here. The learning center tab is going to be primarily for uh, think or swim help and the education tab is going to be for just general stock market type help. Um, so pretty much anything you need help with, uh, if you don't get it in this video, you can search for it right here. So let's start off with the left sidebar right now, which is this little box right here. Um, if your yours is not open, um, you can just click this button right here and it will open it up. You can actually drag this to change how large this left sidebar is. Um, the cool thing about this is you have some gadgets that you can add to it. So we're going to add a couple of gadgets. I'm going to show you the most used ones, gadgets that I use. And that's going to be Trader TV. I also like to add a gadget for a watch list. And I also like to add a gadget for live news. Now once you've added these gadgets, what you want to do is you actually want to link these together. You can see this little button right here. We're going to click on that and you want to link all of them the same color. So we're just going to choose red. So we'll choose red there and we'll choose red right here as well. So now once we have our watch list, um, <clears throat> and I'll show you how to build a watch list in a second. For now, we're just going to pull up a public watch list. So we will look at, let's just do the NASDAQ 100. When we do that, if I click on a ticker, it's going to pull me up news right here as well, since they are linked together by this red dot. Something else that you want to do while you're linking these is you want to go on over to the trade tab. We want to link it red as well. We're going to go to the chart tab. We're going to link it red as well. And we'll go to the analyze tab as well. And we will link it red also. So now anything we pull up over here is automatically going to populate into the analyze tab, into the trade tab, which we will do our trading as well as the charts tab so we can see charts. So real quickly now I'm going to show you how you can create your own watch list. So we're going to click on the tab right here and we're going to go to create watch list. Uh, we're just going to name it anything. I'm just going to say test and hit enter. And now we're going to go down here and just click underneath symbol and we're just going to type in a symbol. So I'm going to do Apple first and that is going to be the ticker symbol AAPL. Hit enter. It's going to pull up Apple. We'll add another symbol and we'll do the SPY. This is the uh, S&P 500, add symbol, and we'll save. So now I have a custom watch list with a couple of stocks. So when I click Apple here, it's gonna show Apple right here on the chart, as well as any news for Apple. So now let's hop into the trade tab, which is going to be found right here. So once we're in the trade tab, we want to make sure that we have all products selected. And on the left side of the screen, we have the option chain here. And we can choose what expiration dates we want to look at right here. And then on the right side of the screen, we have the implied volatility of each option chain, as well as the expected move of that particular option chain. So one thing I like to do is I like to come up here to spread and make sure that is set to single. Uh, what this will let you do, it will let you manually select all of your options. Um, otherwise, you have a couple of presets in here so if you want to do like condor here it's going to have your options already picked out for you or the strikes per se and i like to have more manual control over that so i just want to set this up as single and what you can do to select multiple contract is you hold down the control key on your keyboard and then you can click multiple contracts and add them 
just like that. If you're not holding down the control key, uh, basically what it's going to do is just going to keep adding in the new contract right here. So just make sure that you hold down the control key to choose multiple contracts. So let's say we want to just buy a call. Uh, what we can do is the ask means that we want to buy, the bid means we want to sell, or that's what's going to happen when you click on it. So if we click on here, let's say we want to buy the 396, we can click on that. That's going to pull that up. Let's say we want to buy a debit spread, a vertical debit spread. So we'll sell the 397 and a half. That's going to be a $77 debit. We can click on confirm send. And that's going to tell us what this is going to cost. It's going to tell us our max loss as well as our max profit. And if we click send, that will go through. Another thing that we can do is we can right click on this and we can click analyze trade. And that will bring this into the analyze tab. And we'll come back to the analyze tab in just a second. Um, let's go back to the trade tab here. One last thing I want to show you is going to be the layout. Um, we can change this right now. We're looking at just um, Delta, Gamma, Theta and Vega. We can click on the layout. We have a few presets here. Um, I do like this preset, which is implied volatility, probability out of the money in Delta, because I'm primarily an option seller. So, you know, I like to know what my probability out of the money is, as well as the Delta. You can also change these, uh, customize them. Um, I have a few videos on customizing these and building custom indicators. Uh, so if you want to do a custom indicator, this is where you would do that. And then they have just some preset indicators already in here. And if you want to add one, you just click on it, double click it, that will add it over to the side and choose OK. So now we have our return on risk here. So if we're selling cash secure puts, that'll tell us what our return on that risk is. So now let's jump into the Analyze tab. So once in the Analyze tab, I want to make sure I'm viewing the risk profile. And this is going to give us basically our theoretical profit and loss graph. Um, we can click on the actual chart and use it to pan left and right. If we want to go down to the prices, we can choose this to kind of change the scale like that. Um, another thing that we can do right now, we're reviewing basically um, the expiration plus one. So basically this purple line is today. So that shows our profit loss today um, as this stock moves. And then this blue line is basically going to be uh, at expiration, what this would be worth at expiration. Another popular view that I like to use is going to be the day step here. And I like to use just four day steps. And this is going to be, so this is every four, so each one of these lines represents four days from now. So we can see that we have, starting today, roughly the sixth, the blue one is the 10th, the red one is the 14th, the gray one is the 18th, and then the yellow one is the 22nd. So that's gonna show us how this option is going to change price over time, or how this spread is gonna change price over time. So if we want to change the scale here, let's drag this back over. And that's basically just going to show us what our price graph is going to be. We can also add in multiple trades here to compare. So let's say we want to compare the put side of this trade. right click that and analyze so now it's comparing both so let's assume that you know we like one of these trades and we want to go ahead and just fill that trade and um, we can go back into the trade tab here and I'm just going to click on confirm and send and if this does not get a fill what we can do is go over to the monitor tab now and it's going to show we have one working order and um, if this does not fill what we can do is we can just right click on it and we want to cancel and replace order. Actually, it just filled, so we don't need to do that now. So now it's going to show us our filled orders right here. And if we still want to analyze this, we can right click it. We can analyze trade. We can create an opposite order. That would be actually to close it. So let's say we want to close this trade. We can do an opposite trade. We'll click on that. And now that's going to give us the sell order to close this trade. So then we can hit confirm and send and send. And now in a second, it should fill to close. So we'll let that sit for a minute and wait. But that is how you can use the monitor tab here for just viewing positions. You can go to account statement here and this will show you um, previous trades that you have made. Um, I think this will actually go back about 45 days from now. So now let's look at the chart tab. 
So I'm going to show you how I set up my charts and some of the settings that I use. And we'll go through that real quickly. Uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to come up to this gear icon right here and click on that. That's going to be the settings. And there's a couple of things we want to do. First, we want to overlap the volume. And what that's going to do, that's going to put our volume up here with the chart. I want to turn the My Tools. I want to turn this on each chart. And that's going to give you a toolbar at the top of the chart. And then lastly, I want to synchronize the crosshairs. So if we have multiple charts up, this is going to synchronize our crosshairs on our chart to each chart. The next thing that we want to do is we want to go to the time axis. And I want to have a little bit of an expansion right here. Um, 10 is normally good enough. You can set this more or less, whatever you want. And then we can go to equities here. And then if you want to show extended hours, you can turn that on and off right here. I'm just going to leave that on for now. So we'll hit apply. So now what that's done, that has given us a little bit of breathing room right here on the far right. And that also has put the volume on our chart. And if we come up to the top, we can see we have this toolbar here. From this point now, we can change the time frame we want to look at. Right now, it's set to one year and one day. We have some preset time frames we can choose right here. So this would be five days and five minutes. Um, the gray area is going to be the extended hours. And the black area is the actual live trading during the day. So we can also create custom time frames right here. And we can also customize this list. We just go to edit and then we can just put in whatever custom time frame that we want. The next thing we can look at is going to be style. Um, I really don't mess with this tab too much. Uh, basically, I just make sure that it's on a candlestick. Um, if you want to change this to say a bar or a line graph, this is where you would do that. But I really don't jump into the style too much. Um, drawings, I really don't mess with drawings too much. Actually, to get into drawings, what you can do is you can just click your middle mouse wheel and that will bring up the drawing tab here. Um, I always make sure that I have the pointer selected. So what you can do with the pointer selected, you can click and hold and then drag over and highlight an area and that will zoom in to that area. If you want to then zoom out, you just right click and choose auto zoom and that will zoom back out. Another thing you can do is you can move the mouse wheel to scroll back and forth. You can click on the side here to change the scale of the price. If you hold down control, you can actually drag up and down and move the chart up and down vertically. So back to drawings, if we click our mouse wheel, we can come here and say uh, select a trend line and this will just let us choose a trend line. We can place a trend line on the chart. We can right click it and edit it or we can just remove it. Now let's look at studies. If we click on studies here. What I like to do is I like to go to edit studies and now you just search for any study that you want to have. So we'll choose RSI. We'll search for that and we have quite a few different ones. We can compare them. Just double click it and that will add it over to the right. Now volume will display whatever study you have in the volume graph here. On price will display it on the chart and then lower means that it will create a lower area. So let's go ahead and hit apply. And now we have a lower area in our chart. And this is where that indicator will show up. And we can add multiple indicators here as well. So now let's add a moving average. So we're just going to add a simple moving average. We'll double click that. And now this is going to be a nine period moving average. We can actually go to this gear icon right here and we can change the length of it here. <clears throat> we can also have a signal for up and down. So you have a lot of adjustability in here. But anyway, we're going to hit OK and hit apply. So now we have a nine period moving average. So if we want to zoom in, which is we just left click and drag over and highlight it. We can see that moving average so we can see when the stock is above and below that moving average. Next, if we want to have multiple charts, we can just click up here and we can choose two charts. So now we have two charts, but right now this is not linked. If we want to look at a comparison on different stocks, you're not going to want to link this. So we can look at the QQQ, hit enter, and now that's going to give us another chart. And we would need to go back to the gear here and change all those settings that we did early on this, such as moving the volume up. 
Um, if we want to look at the same stock, but just different time frames, we can actually link this. We can choose red because that's what color we have right here. And now we're looking at the spy. So now we have a five minute chart on the left and a one minute chart on the right. And because earlier we linked our crosshairs, we can see that our crosshairs move on the same area in the chart. So now if we want to save this grid or this layout, we can come up here and click up here and we can go to save grid and we'll just do two chart. I'll just do something simple and hit save. So now let's say we, we, we go to a different one. We can just go back and click on and now that brings up our two charts. But I'm going to go back to a single chart for now. So I'm going to show you how to use this My Toolbar right here. What you want to do is for this, we want to actually save this chart as a style. So first we're going to add a few studies. So we're going to do, we'll add RSI. We'll do the MACD. And then let's try maybe some moving averages. apply. So now we have some moving averages on our chart right here as well as the RSI and the MACD. What we can do is we can right click this, we can go to style, and we can save this as a style. We want to make sure that we choose include patterns in study set. Hit save. So now that we have this saved as a style, we can go up to our toolbar up here. We can click on the gear icon. We want to go to add button and we're going to add a style and it's going to bring up our styles. And I think I named this as Style 5. So now it's set as Style 5. We will hit Done. So now, if we go back to the one year daily chart, because I have not saved this grid as one year daily, when I click on this, it's gonna bring up just a one year chart with nothing in it, just like that. But now if we click on Style 5, it's gonna pull up that style that we just created. Okay, so that should do it on our beginner guide here. If you have any questions on some of these other tabs, um, feel free to let me know. Um, I do use them occasionally, but I would say that these, basically the chart, analyze, trade, and monitor tab, and then the side tab, I use every day. Uh, these other tabs, I don't use all that often. I do have quite a few videos on how to use the scan tab. I probably have 20 videos on how to use the scan tab, so I have tons of information there. That's why I didn't go over it in this video. But anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great day, and bye.